It's confirmed, we are getting a Japanese Ruby anime series. Ruby Ice Queendom was revealed today on March 25th during Anime Japan 2022. It's a TV anime being produced in Japan and it's set to premiere this summer. The show will be dubbed by the original English cast of Ruby and simultaneously released with the Japanese version. The anime is being produced by Studio Shaft and the staff is a who's who of people involved with well-revered anime. During the reveal panel, they premiered a trailer for Ice Queendom, and for the majority of the trailer, it appears to be a retelling of the events of Volume 1. But at the very end... There's a shattering, and it shows Weiss in front of herself, frozen. And this is where the alternate character designs that were revealed the previous day come in. On the official website, there are character portraits of Team Ruby and Juniper, both in their original outfits and in new ones, mostly themed around cold weather. And if you know me, you know that winter clothes are 100% my shit. I love the majority of these designs, and I'm really excited to see how these will actually be used. No real information about the plot has been revealed yet, but if I were to bet, I think it's going to be a bait and switch. I don't know how exactly it will be executed, but I think that for the beginning of the show, it will play out just like the original. Then, there will be some sort of twist that leads to these outfits making sense. Considering the writer of Madoka Magica has a role in this production, a massive plot twist is certainly in the cards. I think some sort of alternate universe will probably be involved, especially considering that Weiss's scar is missing on her alternate design. This might mean that she never got the scar in the first place while fighting to get into Beacon, and she might be heading the SDC. The way the alternate Weiss is presented in general seems to set her up as an antagonist. Ruby also has a snowboard here, and it was implied during the Anime Japan panel that this may be a transformation of Crescent Rose, which I don't really have anything to say about, but I mean, that's awesome. I do hope that the series doesn't hinge on being a retelling too heavily. I said in my last video I don't really have much interest in seeing a story I already love being retold, and that still rings true. There is a novelty to seeing moments of the original series animated like this, but I think something original is much more interesting and engaging. The scenes in the trailer all seem pretty early though, so I have a feeling the twist won't take too long. There are also scenes from the trailers featured here, so we will probably see them being adapted more cleanly into the story. The trailers always felt particularly detached, so I'm excited to see how they're integrated. It was also revealed that in addition to the TV anime, there's going to be a comic adaptation of the anime being serialized monthly. As well as Good Smile revealing that the characters' unique designs for the series will be turned into figures, both with show-accurate designs and Nendoroids. The OP and ED were also revealed during the panel, with the ending being sung by the Japanese voice actor for Ruby. I do hope that Jeff and Casey Lee Williams will be involved in some way, since their music is an iconic part of the series, but it's unclear if there will be any involvement there. Rooster Teeth is playing a supervising role in the production, making sure that the show retains the feel of the original series, but in general they don't seem to be majorly involved. The animation is incredibly smooth and well done, so no matter how the series turns out, it seems like it's going to be pretty visually stunning. I'm quite excited to see where this anime will go, though I am a little cautious of throwing my entire hype into it. For me, Ruby is a show that's particularly special because of its soul. And with a much larger production like this, there's always a chance that a product may come out uninspired and soulless. The original writer's supervising and the lack of any anime trashiness does help me to be a bit more optimistic though. Regardless of how this anime turns out, I think that it's pretty incredible that this show has reached this point. A true Japanese anime being worked on by veterans of the industry. I don't think anyone could have predicted this series being here when it premiered nearly a decade ago. And I guess we can only wait and see how it turns out.